Good morning. Uh, welcome. It's uh, great to have you. Doesn't whether, whether it's uh, morning, evening, or night, uh, whether it's Sunday, whether it's not Sunday. We're uh, glad that you could be a part of this. And obviously, as we consider a, a verse from Romans chapter fifteen, verse thirteen, which uh, uh, we're going to read in a little while, uh, you could look it up. I'm reading the ESV version of that verse. We're going to talk about uh, the God of hope and. Uh, before we do that, let's just pray. Lord God, we just bring to you this time of uh, considering your word. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that your spirit would breathe on it. And more importantly, that uh, most importantly, that this word will become a part of us. That, that your word would be something that uh, changes us and changes the way we live and that changes the, uh, your presence and your plan in our life. Uh, we just thank you for your spirit living in us and being able to inspire us as we take to your word. Amen. Uh, we've been doing a series uh, throughout the beginning part of this year where we talked about always love. Uh, God always loves me. God always loves his church. God always loves the world. And then we talked about what our response to that would be. And uh, we're moving on from uh, God of love. We'll come back to it uh, every now and then. But we're going to move into a series series where we uh, look at the, the word hope. And uh, you might remember from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 uh, that uh, Paul is, has this conversation between Romans 12 and 14 about the, the character and nature of God revealed in our faith, hope and love. These three things, he says at the end, are rem they remain, they abide, uh, they live in, and they live on. And the reason that they live on is because they are part of who God is. God is love. God is hope. And God is faith. And we get those things from him. And it's not the other way around. And we want to focus on um, the God of hope this morning. And uh, we need to, to take hold of this, especially given what's happened this week. Um, and I don't know whether you've been watching the news, um, especially what's happening in America. Uh, I'm just astounded. 100,000 people have died uh, as a direct result of, of corona in America, which is, is massive compared to the stats coming out of Australia. And, uh, and then on top of that, you just have massive unemployment in America, uh, and then you've got this social um, disease um, as a result, racial tensions, and from the, re the resulting from uh, in, uh, endemic and um, injustice, um, which has not been uh, at a state level and a local level, has not always been handled um, with with justice. And there's this cry um, coming out from not just black uh, Americans, but from people of all nationalities, all races that live in America, that we want justice to prevail. And so I, I look at that and I think, and I look at there is this despairing, and for, for many people, that, that there's, there's almost a, a powerlessness and a hopelessness that you hear coming out of the States. And uh, it's not so coming, that message, we don't hear that rhetoric or story coming out of Australia, but still, we know people who have uh, lost jobs, we know that people have lost businesses, and that there are large parts of our community, uh, people who work for clubs and hotels and and other places which are just completely shut down for months at a time, which are big businesses and they have just completely stopped. Some of those will not start again because they'll go bankrupt. And I guess that the, the world we're living in right now is very reliant on, on this life and what happens in this life for their hope. Um, their hope is that their business will do well. Their hope is, is that things uh, are going, somehow they'll get out of it. And some people just go, I have no hope. It's, it's all lost. It's, it's gone. But this morning, I want to talk to you about the God of hope. And I want to read to you uh, from Romans uh, chapter 15, verse 13. But before I do, let me just tell you what, when we, we read this, this scripture, the word hope in Greek is um, uh, elliptus. And the word elliptus uh, is the, is, carries this idea. Uh, remember, uh, this, this word hope, in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, true hope, the, the, the hope that resides in God, that we get to have reside in us, is joy, joyful anticipation. It's a beautiful word, hope. Joyful anticipation and a confident expectation. What a, what a 
beautiful ideal. Uh, it, that's unlike the way in which most of us use the word hope. You know, I, I hope it doesn't rain today. I hope things are going to work out for you. All sorts of ways we use the word hope. And that the way we use it is more of a temporary, wishful kind of thought rather than that joyful anticipation and certain expectation. And you can only have that when you've got a faith that is in something unmovable, something trustworthy. Um, and then from out of that comes this hope that says, because this is true, I know it's going to happen. And that's what hope is. Here's the great thing about the God of hope. Uh, his spirit lives in us. And therefore, his hope lives in us. And his hope is like a living water. It's like an artesian bore. It's springing up with us to new life. The Holy Spirit's presence and his power in our life means that you have access to all his divine qualities and all we need to do is to take hold of them and make them ours. Uh, Paul talks about the fact that we are new creations and we've got this new life living in us. That new life is God himself. And we get to live out of that life. And I want to say to you, he is the, this morning, he is the God of hope. And what's going to come, what's going to be in you and what's going to flow from you today is his hope. His hope is going to be in you and it's going to flow from you. And I want to read to you from Romans 15, verse 13. This is what it says. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound, excel, exceed in hope. God, his nature is hope. He's always hopeful. I think God is the ultimate optimist. Uh, God, nothing surprises God. Uh, we read Revelation and throughout Revelation we read that the end times, Matthew, Jesus predicts that the end of things that would happen at the end. And they've been happening for 2,000 years. There's been... The church has been persecuted. Uh, even I, I remember as a kid reading stories about people in Russia and communist countries that were persecuted for their faith and they were heroes of my faith. People in China being persecuted for their faith. People in, in African countries and now Islamic countries being persecuted for their faith. And yet all of them have this one thing in common. They have this undying, secure hope. And God predicts all these things, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, wars and rumours of wars. He predicts the Antichrist. He predicts all, all these things and yet God is filled with hope. Why? Because at the end, the world as we know it comes to an end. Jesus returns and those who are dead rise and those who are living rise to be with Jesus and he inaugurates, inaugurates his new and eternal kingdom where we become his people forever and he is our God and there is such joy and praise abounding in heaven. This is an amazing hope. But God thought of it first and he's already been there because he is the beginning and the end. He is not worried about your... Uh, he's not worried about getting you out of your current bad time or your, your pain or whatever you are going through. Um, why, why isn't he not worried about that? Because he's able to get you through that. And he knows what's coming at the end. He knows at the very end he will work all things together for our good. This is the God of hope. The amazing thing about the God of hope is that he is the source of hope and he has hope for the hopeless. There's nowhere else in the world we can get a hope like God. He has hope for those who put their hope in him. What others would write off, God doesn't write off. When things look bleak and completely written off and hopeless, God looks at that and goes, that's where I'd love to thrive. God can take a wretched, naked, blind and poor person whose life has been destroyed by Satan and sin and breathe new life into him. God loves a dead body because he can breathe life and bring it back to life. Ezekiel was told by God, Say to these dry, dead, scattered bones, come back to life. Breathe on them. 
I love the fact that God is able to take something completely dead and gone. That is a hope. And I love um, the next part of this verse. It says, May the God of all hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and believing. The Amplified um, Bible says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and then in brackets, through the experience of your faith. So this is an interesting thing. Hope is the companion of joy, and it's the partner of peace, and it is the friend of faith. Let me say that again. Hope is the companion of joy, it's the partner of peace, and it's the friend of faith. Let's begin with, with just looking at that, the companion of joy. In Romans 12, 12, Paul says, Be joyful in hope. Uh, there is a joy feeling that comes when you have that confident assurance that there is an answer, that there is a solution to the problem, that there is a cure, that someone has got it for you. Um, there is also a shalom feeling, a peace, as the God of hope abides, remains, and lives in you. Uh, shalom is not just the absence of conflict, uh, but it's also God's amazing blessing, favour. It's his triumph and his victory. It's this mighty idea. And may the God of hope fill you with joy and shalom. Oh, this, is, this is an amazing hope that, that, that God's hope comes with this joy this bubbling assurance of anticipation that God's got it, this certain expectation. And it fills me with both joy and peace. And by the way, those two things together are a mighty force in our life. Hope is the, the friend of faith. And you need faith in the promise to take hold of the hope. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Romans 8.24 says, Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hope is this beautiful connection between joy and faith. And when you put your faith in the God of hope, who is trustworthy, then when he makes a promise to you, you can be absolutely certain and have this joyful anticipation and this certain expectation that it's got it. You know what? The world, which is hopeless and despairing, is looking for people. And you are wanting to be a person because this is who God wants you to be, who's made you to be, to be a hope-filled person. That's his desire. He came to live in you that you could know the God of hope, living reality in you, and have enough, as it says in this next verse, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That Greek word, abound, it carries this idea of abounding, overflowing, that you would have an excess of, what is it? Hope, a lepus, a joyful anticipation and certain expectation. What I love is that Paul's making this a prayer. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in faith, that you might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and be abounding in hope. So the result of you having your hope assured, having your trust, this joy and peace abiding and living in you, as 1 Corinthians 13 talks about these things remain, they abide, they live in us. When that abides in us, then you've got this overwhelming, abounding, excessive amount of hope to give to others who are hopeless, who have no hope. This is my prayer for us today. I pray that when you look at things that that are coming your way, the things that uh, you see in others' lives, where you see the things that you're encountering, uh, that you're struggling with, that you will look back and you will look back to who you trust in and ask yourself, has God been faithful? Has he revealed himself as faithful and true? And then when you put your faith in that, saying his promises are assured and true, they are yes and amen, and then you come to this reality that says, my Hope is in God because God is, this carries this uh, um, joyful anticipation and certain expectation that what he said he's going to do, he's going to do. And you know what? People out there are looking for people like you and me filled with this hope. And 
know, I'm wondering what hope looks like in everyday life. Maybe as you go into your breakout groups, you could consider what does hope look like in everyday life? What does it sound like? Uh, what is it a response to? And how do people know this abounding?